Antonio Banderas is back, baby, for Puss in Boots 2. 12 years later, 12 years a cat, has the hat, has the swashbuckling sword, has the attitude, or <laughs> catitude, if you will, and he's got a brand new movie. Let's talk about it. But why now? Why wait so long to make a sequel to Puss in Boots? I'm genuinely asking you because I don't know the answer. I don't, I know very little about anything. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel Adam Does Movies where I post movie commentary every single week. Reviews, rants, things of that nature. I'm a professional. Now, several times I've called this a sequel to Puss in Boots. I believe I refer to it as Puss in Boots 2. There's no two in this title. It can very much be a standalone fairy tale, which it kind of prides itself in being. It's called Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Hmm. I'm kind of glad that it's not a direct sequel or really doesn't reference that it's a sequel at least, even though it definitely takes part in the Shrek universe with a couple cameos and nods and little Easter eggs for you to pick up on, I'm sure. It also doesn't look like the last Puss in Boots movie to my recollection. Again, it's been a million years since the last movie. I remember nothing about it. I retain no information from that film. I don't even know if the characters that show up in here were in that movie. That's how separated I am. Yet I was told several times, at least three, to go see Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. So I did. I listened to my community. And uh, I have to say, they were right. They were right on the money with this. Time well spent. And why would I think otherwise? The film was in good hands from the beginning. We're talking about Joel Crawford and Paul Fisher. The dynamic duo behind movies such as The Croods 2. And Lego Ninjago, the movie. So not good track records, not, not the best uh, portfolio, but I can safely say this is one that they're gonna be putting on their resume going forward. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish was a fantastic movie. Not only did it up the ante in the visual department, this is a beautiful bitch. Rivaling movies like Into the Spider-Verse when it comes to creativity on the screen. I was loving the opening action scene where the animation is kind of jolty and disjointed. It looks like it's running at five frames per second, which sounds like a turnoff, but I was all in. I was all in that puss. In boots. The production across the board is stellar. The music, oh my God. Several times during the film, I turned over to my son who I took with. I'm like, are you hearing this with your ears right now? Or are you too focused on the visuals, you fool? I don't know why I yelled at him. I don't know why it was so aggressive. I also don't know why we were the only two people in the movie watching it. From the opening moments where we hear Antonio Banderas' brassy, deep baritone telling us about this fairy tale to the final moments of the movie. It's a non-stop joy, filled with action, filled with comedy, filled with some drama I wasn't expecting. No tears were shed, but hats were tipped in the direction of the film. Joining Banderas on his misadventures is Selma Hayek voicing Kitty Softpaws. Again, possibly a carryover character from the last movie. I don't know. <laughs> I forgot all about it. She's great here, though. They give her a proper backstory. They have a good tension between these two heroes. And of course, we have our newcomer, Burrito the dog. He's got a heartbreaking backstory, but there's no chips on his shoulder from it. He walks tall, he walks proud. Now, what's a good fairy tale without some bad fairy tale villains? This one's got a cornucopia of them, to use a word that seldom gets used anymore. It's kind of sad, it's a great word. Not only do we have Goldilocks and three bears, but we have a baker's dozen amount of enemies here, including a vicious wolf who is hunting down our hero. There was a few moments where I had to pause and take stock of what I was watching. Pause was an intentional play on words because this is a movie about furry animal critters, namely that of a cat who has, you get it. He was menacing, he was vicious, he was downright frightening. So if you're thinking about taking the little one out to the movie, I would tread a little lightly. There are some parts of the films that are genuinely a little scary and they all have to do with this assassin who's on the hunt. It's on the loose. He plays a very integral part of the story. As Puss in Boots is on his last life, he shed the other eight, and now he's starting to think, holy crap, I can actually die. 
And just as Lady Misfortune would have it, that's when this assassin shows up. Scares off old Puss in Boots, and now he's retired. Now he's living a life of fear, not the life he wants. And that's really as far as I'm going to take the plot, because as the story unfolds, things are revealed, and things are brought to the surface, which lead to a very epic final battle. The movie's full of great action, but when we get to that ending piece... Oh, I was cheering in my seat. My son was standing up. We were going, yeah, baby. It was awesome. And we're the only ones in the theater. So, you know, we could do that. We could afford to do that without being ridiculed or shamed. One of the luxuries of doing a movie show on YouTube is having an audience that's willing to kind of push for their movie that they like. And as someone that prides himself in taking chances on films, trying new things out in the cinema space, I'm very happy that I once again listened to what they were saying and went out and saw Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, because damn, it was fun. It was a great movie. And this is coming from someone that's not big on the Shrek-verse. Shrek 1's good, Shrek 2's fine, and then after that, I don't care. But this, this made me a believer, Smash Mouth. And I'm excited for where this franchise goes next. Hopefully, it doesn't take another 12 years to get there. Those are my thoughts on Puss in Boots. Let me know if you have some in the comments below. Did you sleep on this as well? Maybe go out and watch it. I highly suggest it. If you like animation, if you appreciate a good story, this should be right up your alley. Did you already watch it and you were shaking your head that it took me so long to get out and see it? Well, put it in the comments. Like the video if you had a good time. Again, think about subscribing if you haven't. We only have one life here after all. Let's make good choices with it. Sub to channels that matter like this one. Thanks again for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Hey, I feel like I scratched your back for a few minutes. Why don't you scratch mine and become a Patreon over at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. You made it to the end of the video after all. I feel like you at least have some investment in what I'm saying. Head on over there, become a Patreon. There's a $1 tier. If you really want to put yourself out there, there's also a $30 tier where you can request a movie. I have to watch it and give you a shout out. It could be something dreadful too. Sometimes those are the most fun. It helps the channel grow. It keeps me motivated and I would just love to see more support. I thank you for your time.